All right, Tubes. Mike hasn't been here in a while. He hasn't been here last week. He's been working over a lot over time. But uh, while he was gone, I know he had to put this uh, this baron in. Let me switch sides with you, Mike, because right, you got, the I got that light. Face. Yeah. But uh, while he was gone, I found the center and, and poked himself uh, six holes there. And I know uh, we discussed he was going to weld that on there, but uh, after a long discussion, he decided that uh, we're going to bolt them on. So. Uh, it should be pretty close to center anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, explain them what you're going to do now, now that you got the holes. Okay, well now... Oh, let me show them. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I know that this is the true center, this hole here, of the the engine. You know, the, uh, the, the dimensional center of the whole operation. So, I have to uh, center the bearing carrier now on here so that I can then punch... Uh, divots, you know, put punch marks into the bearing carrier through these holes and that'll tell me, so I know where to drill and tap the bolt holes on here. So, uh, what I'm going to do is, um, I know this diameter, I'll just get a, a piece of aluminum or something, something scrap somewhere and uh, make a little boss, a little guide, something that'll slip in here at 7 eighths and then have a little nub on it that'll fit in that hole so that it'll hold this directly centered and I can hold that on there and mark my holes. Okay. So that's a whip something up real quick for that. Alright. Uh, your your crankshaft is looking good there Mike. Alright thanks. Yeah. Got the two bearings done. And if we I would get both of these mounted on here tonight and assembled mm -hmm. uh, and have a spinning crankshaft and a block I'll be really happy. Yeah. Alright well let me get out of your way so you can get the All get right. working. Thanks. Mike's making a little jig over here. Yeah, even with all the time you spend on them engines, you, you, you almost spend half and half the time making jigs and rigs and all kinds of stuff to make this work. And he's just facing that off. Yeah, just, just start with a flat uh, surface. Yeah, it takes time. I mean, there's a lot of... It's, it's just, you know, like if you're going to tool up a factory, you know, you have to make half of your tools that you're going to need. Right. You know, to run a production line. It looks a little cattywampus from here, but it's not. It's an illusion because there's a flat, a small flat on that piece of stock. Let me scoot around the other end there. See the flat spot? Yeah. See it a little better anyway. I'll get a better look at it when you've done that. One more face, one more cut should do it. All right. Let me see it a little flatter and it might spin the wheel. Right here. Yeah, it's got a flat on it. That's why. That's why it looked. Uh, but that's that's going to be plenty good for what he needs. He, like I say, he's only using it for a template or a jig or whatever, yeah. whatever I you want to call it. Diameter down a little bit, so I'm, I'll lose most of that flat anyway. So right. All right, continue on, buddy. All right, thanks. All right, let's get check see how Mike's doing. What you got there, Mike? A hawk? A hawk. A hawk. That's for drywall. Oh, that's what it looks yeah. like. You turn it upside down. It's got a handle. Yeah. Yep. Well. This is the little spindle I made to hold the bearing. So how, how tight is it? How precise is it? To the millionth? Oh uh, yeah, it's pretty close there. You know, it fits in there pretty well. You gotta get it lined up just right. Oh yeah, look at that. So, and you gotta get the bearing to slide on. Well, you gotta get the bearing straight or else it won't slide on there. So, but, you know, huh. it's pretty good. You're gonna just uh, use that as a template or are you gonna uh, punch in? Well, it's a guide. It's it, the, it, the the concept is that it holds it there in position while I punch all six of these dots here. Because you know that somebody's going to say something. Yeah. If you punch it, they're going to say, well, "Why didn't you just drill through it?" If you drill through it, they'll say, "Why did you just punch it?" This is what I'm doing. I do. If they want to build their own, I don't care. They can build their own. Okay. So this is the way I'm doing it. All right. You know. This is what the instruction manual says, right? Right. Right. <laughs> okay. So yeah, set this in the vise and. Uh, Put the vice draw on the little spindle here and I can punch them from the back. Okay. Alright. Good enough, buddy. Uh, let's see what Mike is doing here. I see the taps out. I'm just threading the first hole here. Uh -huh. So I punched it and marked it. And what I'll do then is I'll bolt this bearing carrier on with the guide in place just so I can have a free hand that I'm not holding it while I uh, mark out the rest, the remaining holes. So right. this will just be a little extra uh, um, added insurance that the bearing carrier is going to remain in its correct location. What are you looping it with there, Mike? Because uh, somebody's going to say something. 
Well, not specific uh, uh, tap lubricant called Tap, tap Magic. magic. Yeah. Cutting fluid. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty much uh, top all, of the line. Yeah, all, all metals. Yeah. So, we'll okay. give a little squirt of that every uh, once in a while. There you go. Oh, Mike, they're going to say you use too much. Oh, you, know, okay. you don't need it to drop, they're going to say. Are, they are. Oh, well. That's actually going to make it worse, right? Uh huh. Yeah. It's going to go all up on you. Yeah, yeah. All right. I wish they were here to help me. Uh, they are. They're helping you. Oh, yeah? Yep. Okay. I spend hours answering their, their questions of help. <laughs> oh, boy. We've got to love the tubers. Love them. Well, there's something. Yep. All right. You keep going, buddy. All right. All right. Let's see where Mike is at. How you doing, buddy? Um, same the thing. Last, the last hole. I was going to say, it looks like you're the same place I was uh, last time I checked. Yes, yeah, this is the last, uh, last hole. Last hole for this carrier. And then you're gonna uh, gotta tap them, huh? Yep. Uh, you love that little mill, don't you? It's it's pretty it's useful. All right. Okay, Keep going, buddy. All right. How are we making out, buddy? I just finished tapping the last hole. Are you, we're gonna test fit it now. Well, yeah, I'm just gonna put a quick file over here. File, file is your friend, Mike. Keep over that and. Uh, Yep, do a test fit. If I've taught you nothing, I, I taught you that the file is your friend. Right. Every person should own one. Exactly. Uh, do we have enough screws laying around? Use. Yeah, let's find them. Right. Yeah, I got I got a ten twenty eight. You had to you had to quarter, quarter, quarter twenty eight. Quarter twenty eight. We're kinda yeah. low on stock last time we looked. Yeah. I know you wanted to uh, put some Allen screws in there, but I think I only had two of them. Allen right. heads. At least have the, the Loctite on them, so let's leave them off for yeah. now. We'll get some, just uh, mm -hmm. use, use the small ones for now. Three. All right, let's see what Mike got over here. Mm -hmm. Get your baron uh, bolted up to your plate, huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm just putting the uh, turn on the last one in there. Oh, look at that, hand tight. Very good, very nice. Yeah, right uh... You know what, Mike, I got a lot of people uh, asking about the, the how you're going to seal that oil in there. Okay, well... As many times as I tell them, I, I still get the question. Well, let me talk a little bit about that. Go ahead. Okay, well... It's a, it's a sealed ball bearing for one thing, so you got a rubber seal on the outside and a rubber seal on the inside. On both sides. Right. Now, what I'm, what I'm going to do is take the rubber seal off of this side, so the bearing, the cage of the bearing will be open to the oil mm -hmm. in the crankcase. Now, there's going to be a gasket in between the, the bearing carrier here and the, the back, the end plate, and then I'm going to rely on the uh, outer seal of the ball bearing, the outer rubber seal as the oil seal, so to speak, um, because the bearings are a very snug fit on the crankshaft. They're not a very hard fit, but they're nice and snug. There's not going to be any oil escaping, obviously, between the inner surface of the bearing and the crankshaft's outer diameter. So, I mean, that's, that's as simple as it is. You just, uh -huh. the, 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 it's already the, there. It's the, made the, for you. Right. The, the seal of the bearing. I don't really even have to take this inner no. seal out. It's a, it's a, it's it's a permanent lubricated ball pretty bearing. Pretty and I'm, sh I'm sure it, it was, it, I don't know what these are rated for, technically, these bearings, but I believe that they would take the load of our little engine for right. a, a long time. So, just, I'm, I'll pop that out, clean the grease out of it, and it'll just be oil lubricated. There's going to be so much oil. Right. flying around the inside of this engine. Viewers, just be patient. There's going to be a lot of oil flying around this inside of this engine. Things are going to get lubricated. So, but that's the, what is this, the rear inner, the, this is the inside of the rear bearing plate. Um, only got one done tonight, you know, such is life. But uh, I'm quite pleased with that. I think it looks nice. Um, I, I, I want to go with um, socket head cap screws uh, eventually. But uh, this is, I'm, I'm happy with that. I mentioned to him that it's not, you're not having pressure, it's just splash. But uh, some, some guys are worried about pressure. There's, there's, well, there's no I pressure, mean, really. Well, no, I mean, there's no pressure. To, to talk about. If they're about. worried about crankcase pressure, uh, the uh, crankcase vents that these engines had originally, the one-way check valves, are still uh, going to be installed except for one. Or, uh, let's see. No. Yeah, except for one. There's going to be two uh, of the original crankcase vents in this engine. They're located up in the rocker box. Uh, one will not be installed because uh, that rocker box is going to be really the lowest point on the engine. So in addition to the drain for the crankcase itself, there's also going to be an oil drain from that particular rocker box down to the sump. Um, but yeah, 
uh, there's not going to be any real pressure built up. If anything, there'll be a slight vacuum. So, ideally. But you have to remember the cylinders and the crankcase vents that we're using are, you know, they are 50 years old. So, I don't, if there's a little bit of pressure build up in here, if it doesn't work just right, if it smokes a little bit, that's okay. That's right. It's going to run. It's a show engine. Right. It's, it's going to run. It's going to run well when it's all said and done, I believe. I don't want to sound cocky or anything, but mm -hmm. I, I'm confident in that we can sort it out and make it work correctly. All right. Another yeah. thing here, somebody's going to mention what's that uh, stand for, the RI, and you also have an R here. Yeah, this is the just the rear bearing carrier, just as a reference, so right. we know. R means rear. That's right, I, you know. I, R I yeah, means rear, rear inner, inside. Rear inside of the plate. Right. So if it ever gets taken apart, you know. Right. And okay. the, I, I'm also going to add a witness mark on here, just so you know how it lines right. up, because these might not be might not be perfect. That's another thing to note is we laid this out, and I'm reasonably confident that this is the true center of the the engine itself, at least to the point that we need it to be. Right. Um. It's not, now, it's not an aircraft engine. Now, right. If I took this off and rotated it one hole, these might not all line up as right. well as they do now. Um, so, Again, it's, it's just a show engine. Right. It, it, it's We're just, just having fun right. here. It's a proof that right, right. we can build a, you know, a, a radial type engine out, out of, of scrap parts. Right. Out of three engines, three $5. Let's face it, folks. These are $5 engines. We bought, I'm pretty sure we bought at least two of these at a time, and they were $5 right. at an auction. So there's, a, you know, a lot of them out there, you know. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. We're just doing this for fun. You know, right. there's people that, that want this to be precise and that. I mean, we just want to see it run. Right. That's about as much precision as we need right there. Right. Out of a, yeah. out of a garage, you know, full of trash and garbage here. So, you know, we, it's not even a machine shop. It's uh, little toys. We're playing with toys here. And a little toy mill, so so there you go. I mean, uh, Mike's running kind of late. It's uh, nine o'clock on the old clock there. He usually leaves around eight, so he put in some overtime mm -hmm. just to get this one bearing done. Yeah. Yep. All right, buddy. Say goodbye to the tubes. See you later. And then we got the other two here. See you tubes. All right. See you guys later.